Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about the luxury trends that I'm avoiding for 2020. I'm doing a couple of videos on the trends I'm adding to my wardrobe for the upcoming spring summer seasons. But in the process of doing those videos, I also came across a whole bunch of trends which I instantly knew that I would be avoiding. So I'm gonna be detailing those in today's video. I'm only focusing in on luxury trends just because I think it's one thing to be spending 30 or 40 pounds on a high street trend, but it's quite another to be spending hundreds, sometimes even thousands of pounds on a luxury trend. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get started. I also wanted to do a quick reminder that my Farfetch code is still live for another few days. This gets you 10% off pretty much everything at Farfetch. It is only available to new emails, new customers, but it is off pretty much everything. There are a few brand exclusions, but a ton is included, including my white Saint Laurent Lulu. I did end up keeping the white one, so thank you so much to everyone who voted on that. You can also get 10% off my beautiful little wallet from Saint Laurent, as well as so many other things. Things. So I will put the code on screen as well as the details for that in the description section if you did want to check it out. So the first luxury trend that I'm avoiding for 2020 are micro bags. And this is one that first came about, I guess, about a year or so ago. And I thought it was going to be a really quick passing trend. But for some reason, it is still going strong. I'm seeing brands release new versions for 2020 and I just don't get this at all. And this is very different from the mini bag trend, which I'm sure a lot of you will know that I love. I own a ton of mini bags. I think they're so fun and great, but micro bags are those really, really tiny styles where you pretty much can't fit anything inside. My criteria is always that if I can't fit in my phone, then it's a firm no-go. You know, I at least want to be able to fit in a phone, some credit cards, a bit of cash, and you know, hopefully my keys and a lipstick as well. But these micro bags are so tiny that there's no way you could fit in a phone, maybe a credit card in some of them, but these are very, very small bags and I just don't get it. You know, these aren't particularly cheap either. I think it'd be one thing if they were like 30 pounds, maybe the same price as an expensive key ring, but these are often about 300 pounds or sometimes even more. And for me, I just don't get it. I would much rather spend that money on a wallet or put that money towards a pair of shoes or a handbag. It's just not worth it to me to spend the money on something that I can't even fit my bare essentials in. So this is one that always, always confuses me. Quite a few brands are doing it as well. So Gucci have their Dionysus in a micro version. Prada are doing these micro bags. And there's another brand, I'm not fully sure how you pronounce it, but I think it's Jacquemus or something like that. And they have a whole range of these really, really micro bags, which I just don't understand. So. If you have one and you use it, please let me know what you use it for. Is it purely decorative? The whole thing just confuses me, um, but this is definitely one that I am not going to be buying into for 2020 and probably ever. The next trend I'm avoiding for 2020 are chunky sneakers. It seems like every brand is doing these from Chanel to Gucci are doing them. I've seen Balenciaga do them, Alexander McQueen, and I'm sure a whole bunch of them which I've also missed out. They are absolutely everywhere. They became popular last year. They look set to continue their popularity in 2020. And this one isn't really about kind of my general dislike of the trend because I've definitely seen a lot of girls with the right kind of style really wear these well and look so good with them. I just know that I would look ridiculous with some chunky sneakers. I only really wear sneakers on two occasions when I'm working out or otherwise when I'm running errands. So I don't wear them a lot anyway. And when I do wear them, I tend to go for something pretty minimal I don't try and get them to stand out and they're the furthest thing from chunky sneakers so this one is more to do with my personal style but it's absolutely one that I know won't work for me I don't want to be spending you know four or five hundred pounds on a pair of sneakers anyway so great on other people but definitely not one that I'm going to be partaking in in 2020 The next luxury trend is kind of crazy to me that I'm even including it in this video because I don't really understand how it is a luxury trend, but it is hair clips, which I am on hair clips in about 
15, 18, 20 years. It's been a very, very long time. So I don't remember the last time I did wear a kind of proper hair clip. I use those Kirby grips uh, and I constantly lose those. But in terms of an actual decorative hair clip, I haven't used one in years. And even though I don't have a problem with the overall trend, it kind of blows my mind that luxury houses are charging 300 pounds for some hair clips because I would much rather use that money on so many other things, you know, again, putting it towards a wallet or a bag, you know, 300 pounds is a lot of money. And to buy a sparkly pair of hair clips, it's just, I can think of so many better uses for that money. So I don't think I would wear them anyway. You know, I'm not really a hair clip kind of girl, but certainly if I was going to do this trend, I would just go to Claire's accessories. Um, so this is a firm no for me, just more from a kind of value for money perspective. I just don't think I could bring myself to spend 300 pounds on some hair clips. My next trend is kind of more of a general one as opposed to a specific item, but it is the neon color range. And this includes all kinds of colors from orange to yellow, green, pink. Pink is probably the one that I'm most on board with. You know, I like pink anyway, so Hot pink isn't as much of a stretch. Uh, I don't tend to go for hot pink with accessories anyway, um, but it's definitely more doable for me than a neon orange or a bright green or yellow. But overall, I'm just so ready for this trend to go away. I don't get it. I know it became popular last year and then it seemed to have kind of fade in the later part of the year. And it just seems to be back with a vengeance this spring, summer. I just don't get it. I think there are so many other more flattering shades I think neon is so difficult to pull off and if I was going to do it, I certainly wouldn't do it in a luxury way. You know, I'd go to ASOS or Topshop and buy whatever I wanted, but in terms of luxury, just spending thousands on a neon handbag or a pair of shoes is just not something that I would do. So I'm not a fan of this trend anyway. And um, again, I'd much rather go for a neutral. I've seen a lot of brands do this. I know Valentino are doing it, Balenciaga, I've seen quite a few examples from them going for really, really bright colors. Uh, and if you are really drawn to color, I get how this is an exciting kind of pop of color, but I'm definitely more on the neutral side in terms of my dressing. So neon is a firm no for me, both for clothes and also accessories. The next trend that I'm avoiding are overly sculptural heels. And this is a trend that we really saw come into play towards the end of last year. And judging by all the new spring summer arrivals, it's going to be a really, really big trend for 2020. And what I mean by sculptural heels are those really kind of curved designs. And this is a matter of degree, so not all shoes are as exaggerated as others, but it's really a step away from the traditional stiletto or block heel towards that very kind of curved design. And again, for me, it's a matter of degree. I don't mind a kind of slight curve at all. I think that can be really fun and look really good on certain shoes. But some of the designs I'm seeing are very, very exaggerated. And especially at this price point, I just don't see this as a trend that's going to be lasting, you know, many years. I think it's going to look a bit tired within a year or two. And now luxury shoes are at crazy price levels. You know, I remember the days when a pair of designer shoes used to cost 290 pounds, which was still a lot of money. But now luxury shoes are between 500 and 900 and sometimes even more. So if I'm spending that much money on a pair of shoes, I would hope that they last more than a season or two. And I just don't see this particular trend sticking around. So happy to buy these on the high street. I just got a pair of Topshop shoes with a curved heel, which I think cost me 50 pounds, which I really like. But at that price level, I'm definitely not buying into the trend at a luxury price. And next up are belt bags. This is one trend that I did not think would still be around. It's been around for, gosh, what, almost two years now, I think. It's had surprisingly good staying power and longevity, but it is not a trend I can get on board with. And I wanted to like this as well. I've seen so many versions. Pretty much every single fashion house out there has a version of a belt bag, if not several versions but I just can't do it. Like, it's just not a bag that I like. And I feel like if I haven't gotten on board with the trend yet, I'm probably never going to like it. So not one that I love. I don't feel like it's going to be around for decades, but at the same time, I could just be biased because I just don't like the trend. I've not really seen a version that I like. The closest is probably my Senrev Aria, but even then I don't wear it as a belt bag. I only wear it as a crossbody or a clutch. So this is still a no for me. I just can't get on board with it and I don't think I ever will. 
Next up is luxury loungewear, and this is another one that I really, really don't get. But to be fair, I'm not really that much of a casual dresser, so I of course wear sweatpants and loungewear, but I really only wear that kind of clothing at home. I don't tend to go out in it. If I lived in it, then I can much better understand wanting to splurge on a few nice pieces, but I pretty much never wear loungewear outside of the house. But even if I did, I still think I would probably struggle with spending eight or nine hundred pounds on a sweatshirt, which is how much Gucci is charging for their sweatshirts. It's just a lot of money and I just don't think I'd be able to pay it. You know, I'm much more at a price level of Abercrombie and Fitch for loungewear and sweatpants and sweatshirts. I just don't think I'd be able to spend around a thousand pounds on any kind of loungewear item. I would always rather put that money towards a bag or something else. I just don't think that's worthwhile for me. So I understand that some people, it can look really great. I'm not disliking the look at all, but for me, the cost is just totally crazy and not something that I could ever pay. And the last trend that I'm going to be avoiding for 2020 are overly large printed logos on bags and accessories. And for me, the one that really sticks out here is Balenciaga, where they've kind of printed their new kind of block logo on their bags and other accessory items. I just don't like this and I'm sorry if you do. Um, I do think it can look nice on with the right kind of style, but for me, I just don't get it. And I understand how logos are a really big part of luxury bags and luxury brands. That's why we pay the high prices that we do. But there is a difference for me of a Chanel CC Turnlock or even a Louis Vuitton monogram with just printing Balenciaga in really big letters on a bag. It just kind of crosses the line from design to just stamping the name out there and it feels a bit more like advertising for the bag, which I know all branding and logos are, but it just feels a little bit different for me and by no means Balenciaga the only brand that does this. You know, there are quite a few other examples and it does seem to be a bit of a trend to have these really, really large logos, but it's just not one that I particularly love. I don't mind logos, you know, most of my designer bags have logos, a lot of my other accessories do too, but logos in that much of an obvious way, I'm just not a fan of. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me down below. If you love these trends, if you hate them like me, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please do give this a thumbs up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.